the internet is trickier than any other source um, for solving the um, references and citations. Um, a lot of that is due to the fact that books are fairly easy because that front page, um, the frontispiece, and all of those elements are defined. Everyone expects them. Obviously, there are issues there at times too when we have different types of books or really old books. So when we're online, what do we do? Well, A, it's going to vary a lot um, just because every website is doing its own thing. Um, often as not, if I'm looking at a specific website, I scroll down to the very bottom and I look for information that says like copyright and it usually gives a range of times. So it may say, you know, copyrighted 2010 to 2020. Um, when I see that range, I choose the the, the closest date or the, the furthest out. So if I saw a range of 2010 to 2020, I would pick 2020 for that website. Um, the AP7 rules are essentially saying, well, if we have a website, it's sort of like a book. So if I'm on, you know, any particular page, like we could essentially call this the home page. Um, if I'm on that home page, well, that's the home page of a larger concept. So they are citing it as sort of chapters. They're saying, well, I could write down who wrote this. So in this case, we would probably have anonymous because we have, you know, just like an open source to a big chunk of information. Um, or we can look for those as well. And then, um, so for instance, even then, like um, this has information down here about Zondervan. So we'd probably say Zondervan Corporation, and then we would put um, if the date at the bottom had been 2020, we would put 2020, and then we would put home page and then this page um, link. Um, so all of that gets tricky, right? You're just going to have to look and try and always feel free to send me a note and ask for support. Um, but what we're going to do today is look at how we pick up a Bible and how we figure out what that should look like. So I'm starting here with American Standard Version. Um, another great tip is that when you open a link like this where you can you know, scroll, scroll, scroll for all these different types of things, what you can do is while you're within that is start to type. So if I, I typed the word new and that brought me closer to if I wanted, you know, the new international version, I can type King and I can get closer to the King James version. Um, I'm starting today with the American Standard because it has some really interesting points that I want to raise. So that helps me find it. Then I can either um, just go to that particular Bible or in this case, I'm going to go to Hebrews 11, 6. That's what I was working on with someone. So we get all kinds of info here, right? Like it's got extra information. It has commentaries we could go click on. Um, I always like to have that chapter part. So it starts to give me sort of in context what's happening. That can also be great. So then because they are aware that we are all looking for um, information, um, if we're citing it, um, what we can do is go down to generally below the passage, and we'll see what, what version it is. Um, this one has interesting information, which is why I picked it first, because it's in the public domain. Um, that means that at some point, the copyright was released, and that means that everyone can have access. So we're going to read up on that. So we're going to click on this. You'll often see blue as hyperlinks, and that lets us know they're going to take us somewhere special. Um, and you'll see that there are three pages about it, about the American Standard Version, the book list, so that lets us go through whatever we'd like, and then some copyright information, which in this case is all about um, it being in the public domain. So you're allowed to use it um, and quote it without any really structures. Um, it is available in many, many places. I wouldn't have to come to the Bible Gateway to find it. But you'll notice there aren't any numbers here. I don't see what year it originally came out. I don't see anything about future copies. At some point, it was most likely copyrighted. So generally, this is a great page to go to to find that info. Because of the public domain issues with this one, um, it's not there. So I'm going to head over here to about the version. And that's where you're going to see lots of numbers. It talks about it being um, a starting point, being the King James Version of 1611. and 1870, they had an invitation. They began work in 1872. Phew, it starts to go a little wild. So then, right here in the middle, I have that it was published in 1901. And in 1928, another group gathered it. So right now, that is the, the sort of newest date we have for it. And when we look down here where these newer dates are, what we find is that it's not the ASV. It was the basis of 
multiple revisions. And those revisions were things like the Revised Standard of 71, Amplified of 16, 1965. So that tells me that we want to be up here with 1928. That's what we're going to pick. Um, then we have a couple of choices. Um, we could pick a page like this as the go-to page for the link to our work. Um, remember that we were looking at Hebrews, but we are citing the Bible, and Hebrews is a book within it. We aren't citing Hebrews. Um, I know that it's a little weird because a lot of times we're citing sort of smaller like a book within a series, but for the Bible, we're going to cite the whole thing, and then we're going to use the book and chapter and verse as citation elements. So because we're doing the whole thing, um, I would suggest either going to something like this, um, like the very the option to, to get on all of them, or even about it, or even the copyright page. Any of them are good, but the about would be great. Um, and then that gives people access to the entire thing. So what, would we, what we would do is we would say Holy Bible, comma, American Standard Version, and Holy Bible and American Standard Version would all be italicized. We'd put a period, we'd put parens around 1928, and then a period, and then we would say Bible Gateway because that's where we're accessing it and we would include this um, heading, um, this, um, oh, I forgot the name of it, but we'll, we'll include this address. So let's go look at something that's not quite the same. We're going to go for um, the New International Version, and we're going to see how it's a little bit different. We'll go look at the same verse. Why not? Um, so again, we have those same options. We can look at the full chapter. We can read it in multiple translations. We have all these great options. And again, you have other things too, like printing it and stuff. But again, you'll notice that I have that bigger bar to click on to learn more about that version. But this one has more information. So what I would most likely do is just grab that. I grabbed 2011 as the newest date. Um, I would put the publisher at the end. So I would say... Um, Holy Bible, New International Version, and I would put that all in italics, a period, and then I would put parens 2011, period. Then I would say um, Biblica Inc., um, and then I would give the web link to Bible Gateway is the place where I'm using it. Um, but we can go check here and see what other kind of stuff. As you'll see in some of the samples, it also, we, we would, we don't, have to have to but ideally we would also say originally published in 1973 so again we get all of this great information about when each item was but we can look here for the book list again and the copyright this time actually has a lot of dates because it is under copyright so a lot of times we would say originally published 1973 in parens after the full reference. So check the sample templates to see what all those different versions look like um, and play with these and look for those details.